Ahoy, shipmates. I thought we'd have a quick look this morning at the OOCL Montreal. Now, according to the weather forecast this morning, it was supposed to be relatively clear skies and sunny. But alas, it's quite early this morning. It's still quite dark, and that sun is just not getting through those clouds. Not the best conditions for photography. It's a little, a little dark, a little grey. Could have done with a bit of that early morning sunrise. But anyway, the Orient and Overseas Container Line is a Hong Kong based company. And their Montreal is their second smallest container ship. Built in 2003. Ah, I managed to, managed to get some colours. Now I know you're really here for the cruise ship in the background, but let's let me distract you with some pretty colourful containers. Weighing in at 56,000 tonnes, a length of 294 metres, and a width of 32. With a 20 foot equivalent unit capacity of 4,402. OCL has a history of naming their ships after places. The smallest ship to the Montreal is the Belgium, that's the smallest one on the fleet. And then they have a, a whole range of ships after that. This is the only container ship left in the ICE class. The P class, the next class up, has 4,500 TEUs and more. But anyway, shipmates, I know you're here for the cruise ship aspect of this video and not the container ship. We're here to see the Regal Princess. Now, the Regal Princess this morning is arriving at the Port of Southampton from the Bahamas. number of Regal cruise ships anchored in the Bahamas and this is one of the ships that is repatriating crew, bringing European shipmates back to Europe. One of the other Regal cruise ships has sailed south from the Bahamas to the Brazil to drop off more shipmates in Brazil. Light is starting to improve, but it's it's just not uh, it's just not doing it this morning. There has been a, a problem with the cruise companies relocating the staff. Chartered flights, for example. Norwegian cruise lines. They successfully transported 7,000 crew members back to Manila in late March, early April. And at one point in Miami, there were as many as 500 
crew members a day disembarking in the port for waiting planes. But the uh, American Center for Disease Control Prevention, the CDC, has stopped this, hence the repatriation of crew via cruise ships. It is the Island Princess and the Crown Princess that are both sailing towards Brazil on their voyage of repatriation. A UK-based uh, cruise tour operator has suggested that he has seen a resurgence in sales. Not only people using credits from cancellations, but also fresh bookings. So perhaps the cruise ship industry will be back on its feet quicker than we expect. Carnival is currently thinking about resuming operations in August. Now, if only that light would improve, it could be in for a nice photo. I've not seen the Regal Princess before. I think maybe we should run through some facts and figures of the Regal Princess. Owned by Carnival, PLC, and operated by Princess Cruises. They have a whole range of princess ships. Launched in March 2013. Weighing in at 142,000 tonnes. Length of 330 metres. And a beam of 38. The height is 66 metres. And a draft of 8.5. 19 decks in total. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a good one. Could have done with a bit more light, but I, uh, considering the time of the day and the weather conditions, I'm, I am happy with that one. Yeah, three, three and a half thousand passengers on board and 1,300 crew. But I bet what you're really asking yourself is what does a horn sound like? Yes, not the most soothing of notes, but that was the theme from Love Boat, which apparently is what the ship makes. And someone presses the horn button. In May 2019, the Regal Princess rescued two survivors after their private plane crashed into the Caribbean near Grand Turk. The Princess Cruises confirmed that, upon request from the US Coast Guard, the Regal Princess assisted in the rescue of two US citizens whose private plane went down southeast of the Grand Turk in the Caribbean Sea. Both people rescued sailed on board the Regal Princess as the ship sailed to the next port of call St. Thomas. Well, it's certainly quite an adventure to tell the grandchildren. Crashed your plane in the Caribbean, rescued by a cruise ship. Sounds like a uh, shaggy dog story, really. Quite busy in the port of Southampton today. In fact, the 
Southampton is in, in the news slightly at the moment with the Isle of Wight just a mere hours ferry crossing from here the Isle of Wight will be having a contract tracing app for the COVID-19 outbreak the Isle of Wight is the first area in the UK to start testing the NHS's coronavirus contact tracing app Council staff and health workers on the Isle of Wight will be invited to install it today, ahead of a wider rollout on the island on Thursday. There has been some criticism from security experts about the centralised approach and your rights about your data and privacy concerns. Matt Hancock, the current Minister for Health, has suggested we should all download it as soon as possible. The app works by using Bluetooth signals. And when two people's smartphones are close to each other, one person later registers as having the virus, the other persons that were closer will be informed. Thus you can self-isolate and hopefully stop the spread. And hopefully this will be helpful news for everyone. There are quite a number of crew on board the Regal Princess. Hopefully none of those shipmates have the COVID-19. There are some benefits for a centralised approach rather than the decentralised approach which is considered the preferred approach of privacy advocates. With a centralised app, you can spot geographical hotspots and where the disease is spreading. You can also work out how to optimise the app's algorithms to make its risk model as accurate as possible, which in turn should help it decide who needs to be told and self-isolate or request a test. centralised app also will gain fresh insights into how the virus spreads such as as a degree to which transmission becomes less likely the more time passes since first symptoms now you can just about see in the background the OOCL Montreal heading away to the Southampton container port. I believe that the Regal Princess is going to fly down to the other end and turn around. I fly, I don't mean fly, I mean sail. Can't see many people on their balconies, but there are a few old shipmates running around the top, getting their morning exercise in.
bits of tug. Following. Behind. Alas, my batteries have run out again. Excuse me while I swap them over. And off we go again. I've had a few shipmates request for longer videos documenting the docking process. I shall do my best. Appears that the Regal Princess is going to go up to the far end, possibly to the water ski area for a bit of water skiing. No, probably not. Probably just to the container port. Swing around and then come back to about the right hand side of the screen, just in front of that uh, yellow crane that you can see. There's a growing number of countries that have a different approach to their contract tracing apps. Ireland, Germany, Switzerland. They all have a decentralised system. There is a concern that if we have a different type of contract tracing app, we may not be able to travel quite so freely as our systems wouldn't be interoperable with others. However, France and Japan have adopted centralised systems. I don't think we're too alone. Apparently the Isle of Wight's Green Party has also expressed doubts. They say that the Isle of Wight has a significantly older and more vulnerable population and the island's one hospital could be overwhelmed. They are worried that people will use the app and not follow proper health and safety procedures and the virus could spread quickly. Quite a large population on the Isle of Wight so it's a ideal test centre. current population of the Isle of Wight is 141,000. It is the second largest and most populous island in England. It was a favourite holiday destination for Queen Victoria. I can certainly recommend a trip to Osborne House. It's just a 
short walk up the hill from Cowles. If you and your shipmates are catching a ferry cross, you can just walk up to Osborne House, enjoy the splendours of the magnificent rooms. The architecture is it's quite stunning. The gardens are also well kept. There's also the Swiss cottage, which is the children's play playhouse, but uh, it's, uh, it's bigger than most people's houses. And then you can also walk down to the beach. Queen Victoria had her own private beach. Uh, once the pandemic is over, I can recommend a little trip to Osborne House, one of English Heritage's finer establishments. And I think we can see here that the Regal Princess is turning. We also can see the OOCL Montreal is potentially turning as well. Synchronized. I think actually the OOCL Montreal is actually just going around the corner. The Isle of Wight was home to the puppet Tennyson. And also the home for Britain's space program. Rockets were launched from the military base near the Needles. course there was the Isle of Wight Festival in the 1970s which was one of the largest rock events ever held the Isle of Wight was owned by the Norman family until 1293 and was earlier a kingdom in its own right British Crown was represented on the Isle of Wight by the Governor of the Isle of Wight until 1995. The writer Charles Dickens is also said to have lived on the Isle of Wight. 
along with the poet John Keats. Karl Marx stayed at Ventnor for a short period of time. The inventor of the hovercraft, Sir Christopher Cockrell, stayed on the Isle of Wight. Actress Sheila Hancock lived on the Isle of Wight. And, of course, conspiracy theorist David Icke. Jeremy Islands, the actor, comedian Phil Jupitus. Yachtswoman Ellen MacArthur. Actor David Niven. TV personality Annika Rice. And everyone's favourite, Alan Titchmarsh. It's going to get a little bit more complicated now. Because at the same time we have another ship arriving. You don't see much going on at the moment and everyone arrives all at the same time. So I'm going to experiment with a little bit of hand footage at the same time. I'm multitasking. This is the RFA Lime Bay, the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Lime Bay. And she will be docking at the Marchwood port. Right in front of where I am at the moment. So I'm going to try a little bit of two dockings at the same time. Or three, I suppose, if you can include the OOCL Montreal. How about that? Three dockings in one. Value for money here. The RFA Lime Bay was launched in 2007. A displacement of 16,000 tonnes and a length of 176 metres. The beam is 26 metres. And a draft of 5.8 metres. It has two 6,000 horsepower generators and two 9,000 horsepower generators, two azimuth thrusters and one bow thruster. Top speed of 18 knots. 33 kilometers an hour for you continental types or 21 miles an hour. And a range of 8,000 nautical miles at 15 knots. She has 1150 linear meters of vehicle capacity, up to 24 Challenger tank twos, or 150 light trucks, or 24 20 foot equivalent containers. Not very many. Space for 356 standard troops or 700 overloaded. And there is a crew of 60. And you don't find this on your average cruise ship or container ship, but there is an armament. A number of guns, which I am not familiar with. Two Phalanx CIWSs. Two 30mm cannons. Four 7.6mm miniguns and six 7.6mm L7 CPMGs. 
Aircraft are not routinely carried, but a temporary hangar can be fitted. A flight deck can operate helicopters up to Chinook size. The Regal Princess has the Spitzer Tugs, whereas the Lime Bay has the Way Tugs, another local tugging company. The Lime Bay will be stern two into the dock. I would imagine this facilitates the loading at the rear of the vessel. Cloud is still here, due to depart at uh, nine o'clock this morning. The Regal Princess is getting very close to dock now, and the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Line Bay is starting to turn. You can see the tug at the front of the Line Bay giving a good old pull on the bow. Went an extensive refit in Falmouth in 2017 and returned to active service in March 2018. In May 2016, the Lime, Lime Bay assisted with the search and recovery of an Egypt Air Flight 804 which crashed over the Mediterranean Sea. See, the Lime Bay has quite swiftly turned around. Hardly surprising, considering she's a fraction of the size of the Regal Princess, but the Regal Princess didn't use any tugs.
The regal princess is edging ever so closer to the shore. Using those bow thrusters and I was going to say stern thrusters, but maybe she has pod drives. I don't know. She must have stern thrusters. There's no pod drives. but there is what's called a sea walk on the side of the ship. It's a glass bottomed walkway that's 60 feet long and extends 28 feet beyond the edge of the ship, 128 feet above the ocean. The glass floor is one inch thick. None of these frivolities on the Lime Bay. on the Regal Princess are 19 feet in diameter. There are three bow thrusters on the ship. And there is a wine cellar with 18,000 bottles of wine and champagne from around the globe, including some Dom Perignon listed at 120 pounds. I hope that's for the vintage one. During the course of construction, over 300 tons of paint have been applied to the ship's superstructure. So it has the largest outdoor cinema on any ship at the moment. And the first film to be shown on the outdoor screen was James Bond's Skyfall. And there are fountains around the top deck pools featuring 85 jets shooting water 33 feet into the air as part of a sound and light show. As you can see, she's almost there. The attending tugs are probably about to leave the Regal Princess, as shall we. Perhaps 
because we should go and have a little look at the Lion Bay. Next to the RFA Lime Bay, you have the Eddy Stone, which is another merchant vessel. Part of the auxiliary fleet. I think we'll just stick with the aerial view for the moment. You may be wondering where the RFA Lime Bay gets its name from. Well, that would be from Lime Bay. Lime Bay is situated between Lime Regis and Bridport, just off the coast of Devon. Certain parts of the coast around Lime Bay are very famous for their fossils. The soft chalky cliffs are constantly eroding away and frequently reveal very large and very good quality fossils. There are a number of tank wrecks in the Lime Bay from the D-Day practice. And this provides an excellent venue for diving. The Devon Wildlife Trust has been campaigning to protect the reefs that are in Lime Bay, calling for an end to dredging and trawling within a 60 square mile
Lime Bay was the site of Exercise Tiger, a practice run for the D-Day invasion of France in 1944. Using the beach called Slapton Sands near Slapton, Devon as a practicing landing area. The operation went horribly wrong when German e-boats appeared on the scene and attacked the landing craft, killing 749 American Army and Navy personnel in the middle of the bay. That's where this ship, the RFA, Lime Bay gets its name from. Of course, one of my favourite little towns in the area say village really, is the village of Beer. What greater name could there be for a village than Beer? It faces Lime Bay and is just over a mile away from the town of Seaton and is situated right slap bang on the Jurassic Coast World Heritage Site with picturesque cliffs including Beer Head. Next time you're down in the West Country shipmates, I recommend a little trip to beer. She's uh, all about home now, so it's been a bit of a long one, shipmates. Uh, until next time. <laughs>